I really love this photo that Wendy took of a little church on Cape Friel's Peninsula with the icebergs floating by. I made the icebergs a little bit bigger and uh, I realized when I looked at other photos of the church, the roof was actually a dark green, but I painted it brown because the photograph looked brown and I like the brown. I'm just gonna leave it that way. So I'm wetting the sky and I'm going to use Thalo Blue the nice strong color for the sky and I want to leave a few clouds but I want nice strong blue next to the white or light spire. I have the clouds on the other side of the sky so that the church and the spire stand out nice and white. Wetting the paper first di dilutes the blue and makes it less intense. You don't want it too intense but thalo blue is a beautiful color for a summer sky adding a little bit more pigment and I'm just going to let those clouds fuse into the paint, the wet, the wet background and I will work on the foreground while that soaks in. I'm going to use raw sienna to start and some quinacridone gold. Now if you don't have quinacridone gold that's okay you can use raw sienna. I just happen to love the quinacridone gold and I want to pump the colors up a little bit make them a bit more intense especially in the foreground. In the photograph this was definitely not this intense and I'm taking liberties, artistic liberties with the composition. There's, some little, there's a little graveyard over to the right and I have just sort of suggested that and used my masking fluid to mask out some of the gravestones. Now I have some burnt sienna. I'm allowing that to blend wet in wet with the with the raw sienna and the quinacridone gold. This is uh, rocks in uh, in front of the church and around the church. And I'm just suggesting shadows on the rocks. They were a much duller, darker brown in the photograph, but I want to make them brighter and warmer. So I'm, there was a little bit of area of the rock that was quite light in there. So I'm just dabbing that back with my Kleenex to keep the light areas. Now I'm using the burnt sienna in the background and mixing that with a little bit of the thalo blue to darken it up and green it up for the background. This was actually I think where the ocean met the land here. Now it's difficult to see from the photograph so I'm just suggesting colors that put it into the background. And I'm using a little bit of that thalo blue with burnt sienna mix to add some lines to the foreground. And I've darkened up the mix, put more thalo blue with the burnt sienna for the ocean over to the right. And there's little icebergs there too. And the ocean around the icebergs on the left. I use masking fluid on the icebergs and the church and the gravestones because it's easier to do a nice big wash if you have some masking fluid on there. I'm not a big fan of masking fluid. I'm not very good at painting with it. It's, it comes out in big globs for me, but sometimes it's just very helpful. Now I'm adding some ultramarine blue and some raw sienna to the mix and greening it up a bit so it's more green. And I'm painting in the background behind the rock suggesting what could be wet rocks, seaweed, ocean, I really actually don't know what, but the colors suggest background. Now I'm mixing burnt sienna with sepia, a nice dark brown, a warmer brown. As you come to the foreground in a painting, you need to use your warmer colors, even if it's a dark color like a dark brown. Mix it with some burnt sienna which is very warm or some cadmium red in with your brown which is very warm but I find burnt sienna is a lovely warm color for the foreground and I'm adding some suggestions of shadows on rocks and making sure that's already dry. Now I have my pickup for the masking fluid. I see people using their fingers or thumb to rub the masking fluid off. That's a very bad idea. You're putting grease and oil from your hands all over your painting, which probably isn't finished yet. Or you may have some paint or pencil on your hands, which could smear all over your painting. Please use something, an eraser or, or a pickup to roll that masking fluid off cleanly. I want to use my Pigma pen to outline the details in, the, in this 
composition. They're so tiny, I want to make sure they're nice and sharp. And like I said, I'm using a, a dark brown for the roof because that's what the photo looked like. In fact, in real life, now I've checked, it's, it's a green color. But I really like the dark brown. So I made that with the sepia and the burnt sienna and a little bit of ultramarine blue. And now I'm using ultramarine blue as a little bit of phthalo blue to paint the shadows on the church. You can, either of your blues, cobalt blue or ultramarine blue are both great for shadows as long as you dilute them a little bit. And I've added a little bit of the green just because it had a green tinge. And once I paint the shadows, it makes the church look very three-dimensional. I put a little bit more ultramarine for a darker shadow on this side. There were lots of windows. I think there were about eight windows down this side. So that was a lot to get into a very small drawing. That's why I used a very small pen. I had a 01 Pigma pen in sepia and another one in black. And the tower was... Um, I think it was octagonal, it definitely has sides. So I'm painting this one side in the shade with a, a greenish brown. I added a little bit of sepia to that blue-green mix. And when that's dry, I'll paint the second one with a much, much lighter mix. I put a few shadows on the iceberg with some bluey green. And there were shadows on the church little round window. The round window, all of the windows had beautiful designs and I found the small Pigma pen was better for making those little designs than a paintbrush. I painted that very very light green shade on the spire of the church and with a dry brush I'm just dragging it across the clapboarding on the church and I've got to remember to paint that other side in. And if when you paint the church if you want to do the roof a dark green, that's fine because that actually is what color it is. I really like the brown, the, the warm brown, but it's totally up to you. You can look up this church on Google Images, or I actually included the photo that Wendy took. And if you wanted to make a greenish brown, you would mix your sepia and burnt sienna with some viridian, or you could also mix your own green with uh, azo yellow and some ultramarine blue and mix your own green roof if you wanted to. Now I'm using the greens and the browns to put in more shadow on the rocks and I don't want the rocks as dark as they looked in the photograph. I want to leave the foreground looking much lighter with the roof of the church and the details on the church to be one of the darkest things in the composition. And I'm just suggesting, I'm suggesting rocks and different things. I'm just checking my reference photo. I'm going to put the, the boards in with my rigger brush. When you're using your rigger, much easier to pull on the brush than to do anything else with it. It's designed to be pulled in a downwards or sideways motion to get nice straight lines. Rest the heel of your hand on your table quite firmly place your brush down and just pull. You need to roll your brush in your paint first so it's well loaded. Don't just put the tip in the paint, that won't load it. You need to put the whole brush in the paint and roll it around to get it very full. There's a little fence around the churchyard. I'm just, I did some of that with the pen and now I'm filling in some of the shading with my rigger brush and some of the shadows in the rocks just while I have it in my hand and it's got the right color on it. Not really what it's designed for, but it was handy. Now the roof, I could see, in this part of the roof, I could see the green tinge in the light. So I have made a browny green color with the viridian and the sepia and the blue. And that is shining in the, in the light. Even though that side is in the shade, that part of the roof was lighter than the rest of the roof. And I'm adding a little bit of brown around the, the windows. Very, very pretty little church. I really liked 
the shape of it and simple to draw. It's not too complicated. I will provide you a line drawing so you don't need to worry. You can use my light box or tracing paper if you're doing this at home. And now I'm, I'm fiddling with my small brush, just adding some cracks and dry brush on the, the rocks to give them a little bit more detail. They're in the foreground. They can handle having a little bit more detail to them. And they were quite interesting shaped rocks. And this is somewhere if you like doing detail, you can add more than I did. I wanted to keep it really impressionistic and not too too labored with detail. I'm darkening up the ocean in the background with some of that browny green mix and darkening up some of the corners in the foreground. That helps direct the eye to your center of interest in your painting. And of course, the center of interest in this painting is the church. So you want your colors, your lines, everything to be pointing towards the church. And if you find that they're not, you can help by just darkening up areas, darkening up the corners, and that helps too. A little bit of dark between the gravestones and a bit darker now that has dried on the shading. Thank you for watching.